I wanted to do a follow-up of yesterday's video, but a more abridged version of where I went through everyone's Instagram messages of them showing me their designs and I was critiquing the designs and giving marketing advice, but I wanted to just break that video down into a very short, concise, maybe 10 minute video where I tell you the five main takeaways from that video that I think are really important and hopefully you didn't miss because a lot of people obviously skip to their section, watch their advice and then stop watching. But there's actually, there were so many different important takeaways from that video and I just wanna go over that. So do me a favor, stick through this entire video. I guarantee it will massively, massively help you with your print on demand business. There are things that I feel all of you, everyone who sent me messages, everyone who's doing print on demand will appreciate and, and, and benefit from. So definitely stick around. The main reason for this video is that everyone told me, well, so many people told me that they have no problems designing t-shirts. Their biggest problem was marketing the t-shirts. And I hate to be blunt with you, but I'm telling you that is not true there were so many issues when it came to people's designs and i actually feel that some of these designs were quite atrocious to the level that it's going to massively impact your marketing so a lot of you who think you you're, you're brilliant at designing but you you're struggling with the marketing side of it i have to be honest with you um sometimes your designs are probably actually hindering your sales and marketing. So sometimes your sales, your marketing could be absolutely fine, but it's actually your design. And that is what I want to go through. These five takeaways are going to be all about design, but also a bit about how to make sure your design is right so that it's easier for you to market. All right. Now, before we go into that, I want you to smash that like button. You know what I'm talking about. I go and smash that like button because well, you're doing so well with hitting the like button. I mean, the last few videos you've done, you're giving me a lot of likes and it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good ego boost. And, um, yeah, it's also really good for the algorithm and more people see the video. So if you have already smashed that like button, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than everyone else. And yeah, I'm ready to get started with it. You can subscribe if you want to subscribe, but I mean, I seem to be stuck around seven and a half thousand now. I'm desperate to get to 10,000, but whatever. I just wanna get started with this video. So the five key takeaways from yesterday's overall 50 something minute video. All right, we'll start with number one, which is don't have more than two fonts in your design. There are so many designs that I saw yesterday that had three, four, five fonts going on, each with a different color, each with different sizes and, and stretched and, and, and stretched up and stretched outwards. Ah, no, it's too much, too much. Stick to two fonts or one font and the width of the letters from each other should all be the same. The height of the font should be the same. The spacing should all be the same. It's just so important. I don't think I saw a single, or maybe there was one or two. Yeah, there was two designs out of every single one of those designs yesterday that had good spacing. Everyone else, the spacing was off. The spacing wasn't centered. It wasn't like, so that this is the t-shirt, right? Right, wearing the t-shirt. This is the center line. This is the, the, the third way line, right? You want your design to come around here, not around here not around here, and when it comes to writing, you want it to be along here, right? Along here like this. So this is the design. Does that make sense, right? Now, people think this isn't so important, but aesthetically, people don't want to wear a t-shirt that is ugly, and if you've got multiple fonts, it's actually harder to read, and no one is going to want to buy a shirt that people can't read. So that's number one. Number two, the second takeaway is if you're going to use clip art, right? And I know you know, you know who I'm talking, you know who, how, how I can't get these words out. You know who you are. If you're going to use clip art, make sure that they are decent clip arts, right? Don't use those ones that a five-year-old would just slap on a coloring book because oh, it looks cute. No, you've got to use the good clip art. And sometimes those clip arts you actually have to pay for. If you just use Google Images, and that's another point I'm gonna add, if you use Google Images, you are opening yourself to potentially being sued because not all the images on Google are free. 
especially if you're going to put it on a t-shirt and sell it. So first you make sure you have the right to the image and secondly, make them good clip art images. And I don't mean a good clip art image is something that has tons of colors, not what I mean. I mean, it's relevant and it doesn't look childish. You want it to fit in with the rest of the, the design of the t-shirt, all right? No self-respecting adult is going to wear a t-shirt that looks like it's been made by a five-year-old. So you want to have decent clip art. And that leads me on to number three. And I only saw one case of this yesterday, but I thought it was such an atrocious thing that everyone has to just make sure that they are not making the same mistake. Okay, and just by the way, I wanted to say to everyone, thank you so, so much for responding to yesterday's video, for commenting, for understanding my bluntness when it comes to giving advice. Um, I tend to not sugarcoat things. The same way someone gives me advice, I want them to tell me how it is. I don't want them to be like, oh, you're so good and just change maybe this. No, I want them to be blunt and be like, you suck at that, you suck at that, but you're good at that. So I like being blunt as well. So I appreciate everyone understood my bluntness when it came to critiquing your designs. But anyway, back to number three. Okay, back to number three. This one is if you have a clip art or you have an image that you are slapping on your t-shirt, remove the background. All right. Never have an image with the background on your t-shirt. So imagine you've got the design, right? And then you have a clip art, but you haven't cut the background out. So it's not a transparent clip art and you've just got a white blob with a picture on it. I'm sorry, no one in their right mind is going to buy a t-shirt that has that on it unless it's made by someone like Supreme. Okay. So really just cut out your backgrounds. And if you don't know how to cut out your backgrounds, either find a, a, a picture that has already a cut out background. And in order to do that, you want to search for a PNG file. Just disclaimer, not all PNG files will have a transparent background, but most of them do. And secondly, if you want to cut it out yourself, you can use Photoshop. There are multiple tools on Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use GIMP. There are multiple tools on GIMP as well. Okay. So just Please cut the images out of your background. Thank you. Right, number four. Number four is you have got to niche down. Okay, so niche down, right? And what do I mean by that? And I know Americans say niche, but I'm gonna say niche because that's how you're gonna say it. So you have got to niche down. What does this mean? And sorry for all the Americans that I've just massively offended. I don't know why I said that. What do I mean when I say niche your designs down? So there was a lot of designs that I saw that firstly didn't have a niche, didn't have a category. It was just targeting the world. Those t-shirts will never work unless you have an audience. If you have a million Instagram followers or a million YouTube subscribers, you can have a t-shirt that says hi and you'll get sales, okay? But if you're not coming from somewhere with a huge audience or even a small audience and you're solely relying on advertising your t-shirt or your mug or your socks or whatever you wanna design, if you're solely relying on advertising it, you have got to have a niche, okay? Now, this is what I'm going to recommend, to have at least two levels of targeting. And if you wanna go a step further and really ensure that your targeting is going to be spot on, you wanna have three levels of targeting. What do I mean by two levels and three levels of targeting? Well, I mean it's got three, well, focal points, you could say. So for example, the T-shirt that says, my cat is better than yours, has one level of targeting, cats, okay? Right, the second, having two levels of targeting is, um, this mum loves her cat, okay? That is two levels of targeting. That is mothers who love cats, okay? And then three levels of targeting could be, oh, this is getting quite tough now. Um, this is gonna be a really rubbish t-shirt, but you could say, this mum can't get enough of cats and coffee. It's actually quite a good design literally just made that one up but that is three levels of targeting you've got mums who like cats and who likes coffee if you're targeting someone who 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 likes those three things it's going to be so targeted you you might not get the sale from the person but you'll get a comment you'll get a like or you'll get a share because people are going to be like oh my gosh how have they dialed into everything I like, right? <clears throat> and hopefully they would buy, but if they won't buy, they'll at least interact with the post because 
If they're scrolling through Facebook and they'll see cat, oh, okay. If they're scrolling through Facebook and they see mum cat, oh my gosh, okay, that's me. And they're scrolling through Facebook and they see mum cats and coffee, they're like, <clears throat> right? And they're like 100% going to get involved somehow. So that was, I think the fourth, yeah, that was the fourth takeaway from yesterday's video. The fifth takeaway from yesterday's video is stick to three color variant of the t-shirt okay so unlike this t-shirt that i'm wearing now which has a thousand colors in it stick to three colors so what i saw from some of the t-shirts is they had their design and then they had well they had like 10 or 11 or 12 one guy had 15 options of different colors so you could get the t-shirt in yellow in red in green in blue in purple in so many different colors and what that does is when someone is going to buy the t-shirt firstly they have to decide whether or not they want to buy this ridiculous t-shirt because let's be honest most print on demand t-shirts are ridiculous even mine were ridiculous right they're very cheesy very corny and you have got to make them as much of an impulse buy as possible so by adding 10 colors they're getting to the page and then they're like oh what, what color do i want do i want red do i want blue do i want green do i want black and then they're thinking about it for so long, it's not an impulse buy anymore. And maybe they'll send it to a friend. Do I, do I want a red one or a green one? They'll ask, they'll ask their partner or their parent or their brother or something. Do I want the green one or the red one? And then they're getting all these other people's input. And then they realize, actually, I don't want this t-shirt. And they'll click away from your page and they won't buy it. So have three colors, maybe black, white, and blue, or black, white, and purple, or black, purple, and blue, right? Try and stick to three. If you can get two colors, that's also very good. All right, those are the five things. That's that's all I wanted to say for the five things. Um, I do want to just quickly add a sixth one that I just just remembered off the top of my head. Really, really important. The sixth takeaway from yesterday's video is your descriptions. I only saw this on three people because only three people sent me the links to their actual campaigns. Everyone else just sent me the picture and by the way whoever did send me a picture thank you my hat's off to you because that's exactly what i asked for i didn't ask for your entire life story of all your different designs one person was go to my page and have a look i was just like no <laughs> that's not happening so everyone who sent me an image thank you so so much um, but the sixth takeaway is your description on your teespring page or your redbubble page or your campaign page someone said this shirt is really cool. Someone said, you should get it because you should or something like that. So basically, actually sell your shirt, give a reason. So if it's a cat shirt and cats and coffee shirt, be like, are you addicted to your cat and can you not get enough of coffee? Well, then in that case, this shirt is for you. It's a limited edition run designed by a cat lover for a cat lover. And might I add, um, I can't, I can't function in the day without my coffee. So I know I need my cats and my coffee. What do you need? Make your decision now. Click the buy button, right? That is a description. I mean, I literally just made that up off the top of my head, but that is a description, which really is something you guys should be investing in more in your descriptions because all of this will add to your sales, right? You may think, oh, I can't do marketing. I don't have to do advertising. Well, you're, 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 you're tripping over on the basic fundamental part, which is the design, the description, the targeting, right? The marketing should be super easy because once everything else is in place, the marketing should just slot in there and people will buy, right? So if you're struggling with the marketing, take a step back and have a look at the the t-shirt the as an overall and look at the design look at the description look at the targeting and see hmm maybe this is the problem right those are the six things i wanted to tell you but wait, wait don't go just yet i just want to end this video by saying something and i've actually written it down word for word here because i didn't want to forget this but i want to say um i'm really really sorry if i missed anyone's designs yesterday Basically, I had the cutoff on Saturday the 12th or the 11th, forgot the date. Um, and some people sent me messages after. Some people I just entirely missed because, well, either they told me to look at their entire Instagram channel and find one that I liked or they sent me their storefront. But I just have to say, I'm very sorry for anyone that I missed. Um, I didn't mean to miss anyone. Um, I know some people struggle with even messaging me in the first place. So again, I didn't, I didn't want to miss anyone, but some people just clearly got missed. I answered everyone that was on my messages 
I am thinking of doing this again. Um, it worked out so well. I got so many messages. I got such a great response. I really love that you guys were commenting, were liking, were getting involved. It really means so much to me. And to be honest, you guys are making up this YouTube channel. And I really appreciated that this channel has kind of gone in the print and demand section. I'm, I'm going to reel it back into Amazon and business and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm kind of making these videos because I feel like a lot of you want to see them. So I just want to say I will try and do it again. It took me hours and hours to shoot and to edit that video. It probably took me three or four hours to edit that video because it was just so complicated piecing it all with the phone there because iPhones are just rubbish and it didn't record it properly so i had to take screenshots and all of that but i am gonna attempt to do it again potentially when my channel is a little bigger so that i can get more views and it just makes the whole thing feel more worthwhile um more more views more comments more likes it means so so much to me so if you do want to see me do this again help me by smashing the like button help me by getting comments and help me by subscribing to this channel because that is how i feel like i'm going to make one of those videos again I think I'm going to do one related to Amazon next time with your Amazon products. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed the six takeaways from yesterday's video. And yeah, good luck with your print on demand. Good luck with your businesses. And don't forget to leave a comment. Don't forget to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.